a team of astro balloonists are stuck in space. Hello, balloon. This is ground control. Something has gone wrong. I'm afraid to say we have no way of getting you back down to Earth. Also, we're about to lose contact with you. Good luck. Oh, no, my mum said I was going to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. <laughs> Damage control and your big fat balloon. Oh, fly me to the moon. In your big fat balloon. After a brush with certain death was narrowly avoided by a carefully placed piece of chewing gum. Oh no! We're all gonna die! Don't pull here again! Chew, chew, chew! Now spit! <sighs> the balloonists have returned to telling stories. After saving our lives, Dave, you've earned the right to tell this one. Alright then. We'll have a proper fairy tale this time. I think there should be more killing this time. There's something coming through the receiver. It's from the boo. <laughs> Sorry, I mean the boo. Oh, it's in Lancashire. Oh, it looks like a fairy tale kingdom. I can see sheep and rolling hills. Look, through the onboard telescope. Right then, are we sitting comfortably? Once upon a time. In a magical kingdom filled with unclogged toilets. What? Fine, it wasn't filled with unclogged toilets. Once upon a time in a magical kingdom not entirely dissimilar from medieval England in the 13th century, there was a noble king who reigned over his kingdom with truth, fairness and plunges. And one night at bedtime, he was tucking his young princelings and princesslets into bed. Daddy, can we have a story? Oh, yes. Daddy, can we have a lovely little bedtime story? Story, story time. time! Story, story time. time! Quiet! I knew I shouldn't have given you that pot of black coffee before bed. Lesson learned. That's odd. The king sounds exactly like you, Dave. I don't do accents. Anyway, it was in Maisie's side. Let me get on with it. Please, Please Daddy! Please, Daddy! All right! If you promise to go to sleep as soon as it's over. Make it a lovely happy story, Daddy. I wouldn't want to have a nightmare, Daddy. A nightmare? Oh no. It's physically impossible for you to have a nightmare in my kingdom. And in fact, I'm going to tell you the story of how that came to pass. That sounds super boring, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, Daddy. Boring. Well, it's not. Now quiet, both of you, and let me begin. Fifty years ago, when I was but a young princeling, there were two magical kingdoms. This one and another, one called Dreamyland. <laughs> Sounds boring. Dreamyland was a magical place filled with pink clouds, rainbows, candy and all sorts of magical creatures. It was also the place where all of our sweet dreams come from. The magical creatures would pick beautiful dreams from the dream crops and take them to the purely perfect pendant where they would all be sent all over the world into the minds of little boys and girls. Right, winning the lottery dreams to the left, shoot number 3782. Swimming in a giant pool of chocolate dreams, shoot number 6. What have you got there? I've got a lovely little dream about a maths exam that goes really well. Happiest school exam dreams go in the rare dream section. Shoot number 429. The creatures of Dreamyland were surprisingly efficient and organised with the exception of one. Dazzling Dinosaurus! Dazzling Dinosaurus! Hey! Dinosaurus! What? Oh, sorry. Yes, I just drifted off. I was just imagining an entire world filled with chocolate-flavored rainbows jumping into a sea of pink clouds. Dinosaurus was a magical blue unicorn with silver and golden hair who had the most fantastic imagination. An imagination that could conjure green monkeys singing opera or pots of whales going to therapy. But... You're always daydreaming. Seriously, we have work to do. If we don't get these dreams down into the children's heads, what do you think will happen? Their brains will just be entirely empty, every night. I'm sorry, I know you're right. I just can't help it. Well, what dream have you got this time? It's a dream for the young princeling. It's a lovely one about getting a huge round of applause for absolutely no reason at all. Right, 
Abstract Dreams, shoot number 326,625. On floor 63, corridor 28, room 57. And none of your dilly-dallying. Behave yourself and get the job done. What? Oh, sorry, I was just daydreaming about a chorus of sailors eating truffles on the back of a big pink elephant. Oh, go! Dinoceros the unicorn trotted off to the lifts. Floor 63. Down the corridor. Corridor 28. Or, or was it 26? Or 25? Oh, this one will do. And into the room. Room 53. Or 51. Or room 59. Oh dear, I think I'm lost. I wonder what the prince dreams about. Golden pinatas with ruby eyes? Leather-bound books at sea on an ocean of silver spoons? Pirates and piranhas do battle in pinafores while peacocks write poetry with peas pudding pencils. Oh, there's the dream pendant. Wait, who's that? <laughs> Soon, the plan will be complete. <laughs> complete. Then we'll show them. We'll show them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my swishy tail. Lurking next to the magical dream pendant were two hideous-looking scaly dragons, Chaos and Havoc. Do you have it? <laughs> have it? Have what? The dream poison, you idiot. The potion that turned these dreams to powerful evil nightmares and unease chaos and havoc on the world. Oh, that. I thought you had it. No, I distinctly told you in our underground dungeon. Pick up the evil dream poison, I'm getting the sandwiches. Where are those sandwiches anyway? I got hungry on the way. Unbelievable. What are you even here for? Wait, 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 wait. What's this? <laughs> Pour it slowly now. Quietly, Master Mysterious was very clear. The dream creatures cannot know what has happened. What am I going to do? They've poisoned all the dreams and who is this Vasilius? I have to tell someone. <gasps> what? Oh no! What's that? There's someone here. Yeah, behind the candy floss tree. It's a unicorn. Get it! <laughs> She's got a dream. We can't let her get away. <laughs> Daz desperately dove through a pink cloud. <laughs> so fluffy. <laughs> Take a fireball, glitterball. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's the last we'll see of that shiny, pokey pony. Come on, let's get back to the master. We'll go through the Mikey Mountains. Show me the map. When you say map... Just follow me this way, you overgrown lizard. You can wound with words, you know. <sighs> and Chaos and Havoc swept through the Mikey Mountains as Dazzling Dinoceros continued her downward descent. <laughs> Sometime later, in a dark and abandoned dungeon. Well, I was going to ask that farmer for directions, but then you ate him. Well, I wouldn't have been so hungry if someone hadn't eaten the sandwiches. A tall, dark figure in a long cloak approached. A tall, dark figure whose eyes burned the colour of glowing embers. The Lord of Nightmares, Vasilius, the shapeshifter. Silence, you fools. Is it complete? Are the dreams poisoned? A hundred percent poisoned, your evilness. <laughs> the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> ah, and the princeling then? His dream shall be delivered tonight, and the kingdom shall be plunged into darkness and torment. And I, Vasilius the shapeshifter, firstborn of the smokeless fire, shall reign from my cold-blooded throne of doom, where daylight is history for the first time in five hundred years. Ah, about that. Um, there was just this one tiny little dream that got away. What? 
Yeah, but we fireballed her, Silverhide. That dream will never make it to the prince. You had better make very sure of that. To the castle immediately. Tonight, the prince will dream a nightmare of my own choosing. That's great, boss. Can we, can we breathe now, please? Fly me to the moon in your paper balloon. What is this place? There's furniture everywhere. Hello. Who is that? It's me, the chair. What, you've never seen a talking chair before? Well, quite frankly, no. Well, I suppose technically we are a minority, so I shouldn't be surprised. We're not as visible as we'd like to be, but the committee and I are working on our representation issues. Right. Ignore him. He's got a real bee in his bonnet about the oppression of talking furniture. Sorry, who might you be? Well, that's another story entirely. It all began... We really don't have time for another story entirely. Just get on with this one. Okay. I was once the king's magician. But then the king started having these horrible nightmares. He kept on dreaming that I was trying to kill him. This is more like it. And so he banished me to this swampy forest. And I've been stuck here making furniture ever since. Why furniture? That's the part of the story you're interested in? All all right. I've always found furniture very calming. You you know, you can sit on it, put things on it, put things in it, build it from a flat pack and get really frustrated with it. It's very versatile. But that chair can talk. Yes, well, that's part and parcel of being a magician. Everything I make is magic. Don't put anything on that table. I made it on a bad day and you don't want to see the results. It's not pretty. Oh, right. These nightmares the king has been having, I think I might know why. Go on. I'm from Dreamyland, where all the dreams come from. And the whole reason I've ended up here is that I was chased by these two dragons who were poisoning all the dreams and turning them into nightmares. I was about to deliver a good dream when I overheard them talking about someone called Vasilius. And then they saw me and chased me. Vasilius, a dangerous shapeshifter, intent on taking over the whole of the entire world and plunging it into darkness. I suspect he's got inadequacy issues. How do we stop him? Do you still have the good dream? Yes, here it is. It was meant to be for the princeling. Hmm... Abstract applause dream. Nice. I think if you can deliver that dream to the princeling yourself, then all of these nightmares might be reversed. And I can stop being self-employed. How do I do it? Here, take this gift. The chair? Try not to sound too disappointed, eh? This chair can walk anywhere it likes. And if a bad person sits on it, it will disappear, causing them to fall on their bottom in a hilarious manner. (laughs) What? That would be hilarious. Conveniently, the chair also knows the way to the royal castle. Good luck! Come on, quickly, there's not a moment to lose. Fly me to the moon in your paper balloon. Well, I'm very grateful to the magician for giving me a wonderful magical chair and everything. But it's actually very impractical for carrying, especially when you have hooves. And it's such a long way to the castle. We could fly instead. You can fly? Anywhere in the kingdom, yeah. And you just let me carry you up this mountain for four hours? I didn't want to interrupt. Shall I take you to the royal castle? Yes, please. I need to get this dream to the prince. Hold on tight. Fly me to the moon in your paper balloon. (laughs) Right, that's probably about as far as I can take you. Magical I might be, but I am made of wood. Guarding the castle entrance were chaos and havoc, who'd reduced the surrounding forest to ash. This is what it's all about! Ultimate chaos! Boy havoc, and let's slip the dogs of war. The dogs of what? Where'd you get that from? Then I thought it sounded good. Any sign of that shiny dream horse? You mean Unicornus Lucidum. Oh, there's something wrong with you. Wait, I saw something shimmering behind that tree. Torch it. 
Rainbows and kittens, that nearly toasted me. What am I going to do? Isn't your glitter magic? But it's only magic to make dreams come true, not to fight fire-breathing dragons. Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> I love the smell of roast unicorn in the morning. It's nightmare time, baby. Like a dream come true. Dreams. That's it. Here goes. Hey, dragons! Is this what you really want? What do you dream of? Chaos! Uh, and havoc. <laughs> oh, sure. But that sounds like so much work. When was the last time you had a holiday? Uh, oh, she's got a point, you know. We haven't had a day off in 496 years. I'd say we've accrued quite a lot of days in Lou. Wouldn't you like to put your wings up in the sun? Drink an Ooh. ice cool lemonade? I happen to know there's a greenhouse under the castle. It's 30 degrees all day round. And all the exotic fruit you can eat. Fruit. Uh, are there lychees? I love lychees. You better believe it. Now, oh, yeah. just close your eyes and count to three. <laughs> right. Uh, one. Uh, uh, what comes next? Uh, five. Lychee slushy. Here I come. <laughs> nice work. I suspect task number two is in that dark and mysterious room through there. How do you know there's another task? Oh, it's a fairy tale. Everything comes in threes. Three bears, three little pigs, three billy goats. Where have you been anyway? Watching from an appropriately safe distance. If I had a proper mouth or digestive system, I would have eaten popcorn. Wow. I nearly got burnt to a cinder several times, but I'm very pleased that you enjoyed the show. My pleasure. Onward. Are you going to stick around and help me now? Oh, I'd really like to, but I have a counseling appointment and I really need to keep up with my self-care. Don't worry, I'll be returning with a healthy mental attitude as well as having dealt with at least one of my issues. So I'll be super useful when I get back to Luke. Great. Alone again. Well, I suppose I dealt with dragons, so I can probably deal with anything else too. Except spiders. I'm terrified of spiders. Are you? Indeed. Who said that? You have bested my dragons, which means you have the ability to defeat a pair of absolute nincompoops. But let us see how you fare against a real adversary, an opponent of true power and cunning, whose name strikes fear into the hearts of all who are unfortunate enough to hear it. <laughs> Who's that then? Me, Vasilius. Oh, cute. What a sweet little hamster. Huh? And with such high ambitions. It's so sweet. Oh, damn. I forgot to shapeshift. Basilius was indeed in the shape of a small but evil hamster. Hold on there a minute. A favourite unicorn watched in horror as the tiny hamster began to transform into something far more terrifying. A spider. But not just any normal house spider. The only thing house related about this spider was its size. In that it was the size of a house. Behold the horror of the king of all spiders. Vasilius advanced on Dazzling Dinoceros. Each of his eight legs were the length of a hatchback car. His body was the size of a medium-sized conservatory. And from his face glistened a thousand watching eyes. Come to me, young unicorn. Come to your doom and death. Oh, I like this story. This is a good story. Dinoceros was frozen stiff as the spider's legs slowly wrapped around their hooves. But in the nick of time... I'm in such a positive space right now. Chair, you're back. And I've dealt with at least two of my issues. Now, to deal with this spider... A flying talking chair? Huh? How can a flying talking chair defeat the honor of Vasilius? Well, there's not an easy answer to that, but I'm sensing that you have some self-esteem issues. What? Well, you refer to yourself as a horror. Why is that? Well, I guess when I was just a little horror, my parents used to send me deep into the Bavarian forest to live with the bats. 
and they called me a, a horror. That might have something to do with it. Right. And as Vasilius was distracted by the talking chair's amateur therapy, he loosened his grip on our unicorn just long enough for her to slip free. Dinosaurus, onto my seat. Get to the princeling. What? No! I was just working on my self-esteem! Paired to top the magical chair, Dinosaurus skipped past the terrifying spider through the darkened chamber until she arrived at the huge throne room. In the centre of the room, the gleaming throne sat, the seat of all power in the land. Beside it slept the king, tossing and turning with horrible nightmares. But beside him slept the young princeling, peacefully, his head currently empty of dreams. This is it. All I need to do is put this sweet dream into his ear, and then the nightmares will be banished from the land. The unicorn fumbled with the dream pendant because who's not exactly made for that and raised it up to the light? No. It's turned dark and swirly. <laughs> I poisoned it while you were in my spidery clutches. <laughs> Sidious had transformed to a small evil mouse and had crept under the door of the chamber. Now, there are no good dreams left in the entire kingdom, and all will be nightmares forever. I failed. I'm useless, just like they said I was. But just then, in a lowest moment, a familiar voice popped into dazzling Dinosaurus's head. Stop daydreaming, Dinosaurus, and get to work. Who's that? It's the disembodied voice of the Dream Monitor. I'm here to provide you with a timely and helpful reminder of your true inner power. Remember how I always used to say you were a daydreamer? Yes. Well, isn't now the perfect time for a lovely little daydream? Of course. And Dinosaurus daydreamed with all her might. She daydreamed a dream in which there was a world where there were no more nightmares. She dreamt so hard that the dream flew out of her head and directly into the dreams of the sleeping princeling. No! All of my hard work! Gone! <laughs> the daydream was so powerful it flew from the ears of the princeling into the heads of all the other sleepers in the kingdom, replacing their nightmares with sweet dreams. The king woke up. Oh, oh, what? What a horrible nightmare. And it was all caused by you, Vasilius the shapeshifter. Your evil plan is finished. You are hereby banished from my kingdom. And can I unbanish? What am I talking about? I'm king. I can do what I want. Magician! 42B? But, but this is 42C! Where did I put that blasted Allen key? Oh, hello. Sorry, well, well done, Dinoceros. You have defeated nightmares. Forever. And I can get back on payroll. Hooray! 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 Just at that moment, Vasilius appeared in human form, standing next to the throne. Outwit Vasilius, he who was born of smokeless fire. Now you must obey me, for I sit upon the throne of power. <laughs> uh, wrong, mein Freund. I'm a magical chair standing over a trapdoor, and I have another take up my wooden leg. Oh dear. Oh! I can't believe I fell for the disappearing chair trick. What's this? A greenhouse? Full of exotic fruits? Oh, oh, hey, boss! You're an holiday too! <laughs> ah, it's great here, boss! 30 degrees all day round, and all the sun's rays concentrated into a small area. Sunlight? No! I hate horrible, wholesome sunlight! Too much vitamin D! <laughs> And the young princeling honoured the heroic dazzling Dinoceros for saving us all by making a queen of Dreamyland. And ever since that day, no nightmares have been dreamt in this kingdom. Daddy, was the little princeling you so obvious? Uh, so 
of this, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy, another story, Daddy. Yeah, uh, and another pot of coffee, Daddy. I want an espresso macchiato, Daddy, with oat milk, Daddy. And then all the children of all the land went to sleep at the end. I enjoyed this one. There was spider and shapeshifter and attempted death. It was quite scary, but it was good. There were so many wonderful moments. Pink clouds, therapy. It had everything you could want, except I was concerned about the amount of refined sugars. A true success, worthy of the highest praise in the balloon. We need to thank all those people at the Boo in Lancashire who helped to make it. Inaya, Okba, Dania and Zane and all their families. Your ideas were amazing. Um, everyone, I've just tried to go to the toilet and it seems to be blocked. Oh, well, I've been busy telling a story. Um, it's just th- th- that it's so blocked that it's weighing down the balloon to one side. Great Scott, the extra weight. It's putting us directly on course for collision with the, the sun! sun! <laughs> Will they survive till next time for another episode of the Great Floating Paper Balloon Radio Show? Fly me to the moon in your paper balloon. Oh, fly me to the moon in your paper balloon.